30, take two. When they originally asked me to do uh, baseball coffee guy, um, I was kind of hesitant because I didn't want to get pigeonholed into one role for the rest of my career. Um, and it was actually Vince Gilligan who convinced me to take the role in the first place. He had called me at least once over the course of several months. Actually, I talked with his secretary, but he put it straight out there for me. He said, look, if you don't want to do it, I'll find somebody else. I really don't care. <laughs> That is so Vince, you know. I knew that he knew that if he said that to me in that way, I'd eventually cave and take the role, which obviously I did. It's just a joy the way he plays him. He's he's so funny. He finds levels in, in the, the character, I think, that we didn't necessarily know were there when we were breaking it. And then when it got on its feet, he so much became that character and sort of steered where the direction of things went. You know, I'm a voiceover guy. I'm not an actor. You know, I know it's hard to tell. And so I was kind of nervous that day on the set when we were filming the scene in front of the, the cathedral. Uh, but Bob Odenkirk was so supportive. And I think it was the 38th take. I was walking by him and he just stared at me. He gave me this really intense stare. Didn't say a word. Um, but it was like he was saying, hey, dude, it's OK, man. You're going to be fine. Just put one step in front of the other and take this thing home. Very next take, nailed it. Nailed it. And um, I'll never forget that. I think his natural honesty and straightforwardness and sweetness helps inform that character. And in the end, hopefully you don't hate him because you shouldn't. He's a, a hero to me. I just think he's amazing. I think he's brilliant and a genius. Don't let him see. He can't see this, right? Did she say that? <laughs> Rhea's such a sweetie. Uh, you know, I haven't had the chance to work with her yet. Uh, in fact, I've never met her in person. I've just seen her through my binoculars in my car outside of her apartment. Um, but that's, you know, that's in the past. And I'm hoping that she'll get rid of the restraining order so that we can officially meet one day. Dave's behind nail. Doubles as Saul's... Uh office in the back of the nail salon here. Sometimes I like to drive by locations here in Albuquerque just in case, you know, Better Call Saul is filming uh, to make myself available. You know, if they need coffee guy to walk by outside of business, um, I'm there. Uh, I thought I saw a camera guy earlier, but I, I'll probably just sit around and wait and see if he shows back up. It's not really stalking. I like to think of it more as opportunity hunting. He asks questions and he really wants to push to make sure that things are the best they possibly can be. All of the writers, uh, starting with Peter Gould, who created the character, we all just love writing for the guy. Playing Baseball Business Coffee Guy was an amazing experience for me. I mean, I loved getting into that character. There are so many layers to this guy that are implied on screen. Um, where is he going so fast? Where is he coming from? What kind of coffee is he drinking? Most importantly, what the hell is he wearing? You know, he's dressed mostly for business. Nice pants, casual shoes. A uh, cup of coffee, messenger bag, but then there's that effing t-shirt. Did he just come from the gym? And if he did, why didn't he change all the way? If he didn't, what happened in his past that would cause him to wear that type of clothing in any normal day setting? That's one of the questions. We don't, we don't see these characters on Breaking Bad, so where are they in the future? Characters present themselves to you over time, over seasons, over many episodes. They gradually reveal themselves to you. There are so many questions left unanswered in just that 2.5 seconds of screen time that, you know, I'm really intrigued. I want to find out more about this character. It is a magnetic character, but he's also enigmatic. He's so good that it would cause us a problem in the writer's room. We know this is a guy who is within the world of the things that he does, he can almost see around corners. The sun is shining on his street, and I think it's not, I think he very much feels that he's, he's earned it. I can't say enough about Vince Gilligan and the cast and crew of Better Call Saul. I mean, it was an amazing first experience for me, uh, and it was just awesome being able to work with a director who took the time to listen to my suggestions on how to improve and build out this baseball business coffee character. Vince Gilligan is just an amazing person, and I'm pretty sure he would say the same about me. A piece of shit. <laughs> Did he say that? No, really? Because uh, he was, he's, he's a kidder. He's a, I'm sure he was joking. <laughs> coffee? 